good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are dialing in from today. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. We're going to give it another minute or so as we still have some folks trickling in. So don't go anywhere. We're going to get started here shortly. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you again for joining our webinar today, Accelerating Cloud Migration with Azure VMware Solution. My name is Nada Unvarsky, and I'm the Senior Marketing and Alliances Manager for our Cloud and Infrastructure Services practice here at Nudesic. For more than a decade, cloud has been a major force reshaping the IT industry. And migrating and adapting workloads to run on cloud platforms has oftentimes been slow, complex, and not to mention expensive. So that's why we're here today to talk about Azure VMware solution. What makes AVS so special? It's actually pretty simple because AVS makes migrating your existing applications to the cloud fast and easy while also reducing your long-term costs. I like to think of AVS as the easy button to the cloud. So today, I would like to introduce um, our speakers. We have Justin Bryant from Microsoft, Justin Kuvian from VMware, and Josh McAleer from Nudesic. These three guys have many years of cloud experience under their belts and have helped hundreds of organizations in their journey to the cloud. So today, they're going to share with you how AVS works, and we're also going to touch on what's driving organizations to go the AVS route. So before we continue on, if you have any questions during this webinar, um, please use the floating question button to submit them to us. So what we want you to be able to walk away with today after today's session is knowing the secret to seamlessly migrating your VMware estate to Azure. We want you to have an understanding of the different scenarios that organizations are facing, and we're gonna dig in on a few of them and explain why AVS is the answer. Also, just know that innovation, cost savings, and security are at your fingertips with AVS. And this is especially important for those of, for those organizations who may still be running Windows Server and SQL Server 2012 in their environments. Last but not least, there is a quick and easy way for you to go ahead and jumpstart your AVS migration. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Justin Kuvion with VMware. Thank you so much. So over the last 25 years, customers have been utilizing VMware as a way to operate their environments and really create uh, very efficient, scalable IT operations within their organization. What you may not have known is that there is actually a fantastic solution to move that VMware environment into Azure, and that could actually be your first step into Azure. So in other words, it could be part of a migration strategy to get you all the way to Azure Native. Um, it could be part of a long-term operations goal to stay doing what you're doing today. And what Azure VMware solution is gives you the best of both of the worlds of VMware and Microsoft today. Uh, so you get the benefits of being able to use the flexibility and speed of moving to the Azure cloud, including the ability to move things like Microsoft environments over and have potentially your licensing move at the same time. And you can do that without refactoring. So we're going to use the benefit of VMware and a, and a technology called vMotion to help you get there. So you could even, for example, stretch layer two and not have to change IP addresses. So this gets you into the cloud faster. And then you don't have to retrain your existing skill set. Uh, you can continue to use the VMware tools that you're using. You're just going to open them from the Azure portal themselves. And you get the benefit of cloud economics versus on-prem environments because you'll save all of the management of that life cycle that you're doing today on-prem. So no more having to worry about what ESX version I'm on, uh, what drivers I have, et cetera. Those will all be managed as a cloud instance for you. So Azure VMware Solution is a comprehensive VMware environment that runs VMware natively in Azure. So in every Azure region in North America, 
uh, save one, which is the West Central region, but every other region than that one, we have a dedicated cage for a VMware environment within Azure. And this solution is Azure VMware solution, which is a first party Microsoft sol solution. It allows you to connect to your existing organization environment and uh, enables a simple migration process, which allows you to move the VMware workloads as they are today into Azure. So the way that we do this is important to understand because what we're going to be doing is, uh, is telling you a little bit about the architecture here so that you can understand how it's consumed in Azure. It is a different type of instance than your typical Azure instance. It is not consumed per VM or per instance. It's consumed on a increment called a node. And the reason for that is what in each Azure region that AVS is supported, which again is 20 nine regions and counting, we have a dedicated cage where we basically build um, a dedicated customer environment per customer. And that is comprised of nodes today. I'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, but we basically build a mini data center for each client running Azure, running VMware in Azure. So rather than stacking VMware on top of Azure Native, we're actually building a dedicated VMware environment within Azure. So what we do is we build a little hyperconverged system per customer, and we put vCenter, NSX, HCX, and vSAN on that uh, environment. We we organize that as a cluster, so you have N plus one redundancy, and we connect that to your existing site over an express route or VPN connection, the same as you're connecting to Azure today. Now you get the side benefit of if you move production workloads to this environment, you get the side benefit of being able to interact with Azure services extremely fast because you've also moved now your production workloads that run VMware into an Azure region. So they're sitting right next to those Azure services. That'll drop latency significantly and produce better performance. And then you unlock this ability to do a migration out of your data center a faster than the traditional method and b using a vmotion using a technology called hcx which is included in the solution so again azure vmware solution is a dedicated vmware environment running within azure for customers and um, we have several thousand cl clients today running it so even though we've basically co-located a vmware environment on a hyperconverge within an azure region for you you get the benefits of cloud. And what I mean by that is um, everything that you'll see here in this slide that's in blue will now be managed for you by Microsoft as a part of your Azure support agreement. So for example, the life cycle of all the VMware that's in that environment, any physical infrastructure issues, um, anything in regards to hardware failures, et cetera, on again, this dedicated environment for you will all be managed as a part of your Azure cloud and comes off of your team. So part of the benefit of moving from on-prem to this environment is it gets your team out of having to manage that uh, complex life cycle of many different vendors and many different software upgrades and many different security upgrades, and you just consume it as a cloud. Um, that's why this is actually a platform as a service offering within Azure. So I'm going to start this slide to talk about uh, why you kind of need to know a little bit about what's under the hood, and then I'm going to pass it along to the other Justin to talk to some specifics. But basically, the way that we build an Azure VMware solution environment is that we build it by, by node, and it's not per server, it's by node. Um, now that node is actually consisted of a physical server that has CPU, memory, storage, and software already built on it. That's why we call it a node. It's not just compute. It's not just one of those different resources. Today, the most popular building block, and there's there's three and counting, is the AB36P. And uh, I'm going to pass it over to Justin to talk a little bit about that. But before I do, understand that this is how you'll consume in Azure. So there will be a price per node 
not per instance, not per VM in your uh, AVS cluster. So there is a minimum of a three node cluster and that can scale all the way up to 96 nodes per private cloud instance. We have single customers that are running over 400 nodes in existence today, um, but you'll have a price in Azure um, and we'll talk about how that can be offered here in a moment, but that will be per node. So it really doesn't matter how many VMs you can fit in the cluster, as long as you can fit, that's what you're gonna pay for is the, the nodes and number of nodes in the cluster. And then incremental workloads that you move into the cluster will cost nothing as long as you have room in the cluster. And then your next increment to add more resources will be by adding a node in the Azure portal. And that can happen as quickly as 30 minutes because it's all just logic and automation at that point. But it's important to understand again that the consumption piece is this node. Justin, would you like to talk a little bit more, more about it from here? Yeah, so just talk, tacking on to what you were saying, adding nodes is 30 minutes, which is faster than most people can do in building a new hardware infrastructure in their own on-premises environment. Additionally, to the left, you see the licensing included. Everything up to HCX is what we manage. So all those updates going from 7 update 3K is Microsoft managed. We actually will send you notifications of when we're doing updates. You have the ability to say no, not yet. And then we will schedule a time that works best for y'all. Additionally, all the resources you see here are just pretty standard of a hardware profile. Uh, you get the RAM CPU, and as you need more RAM or more compute, you would add those nodes, and you would get everything else that goes with it, including the storage itself. Now, one of the reasons that people would consider looking at moving into the cloud is as multifaceted. Um, some people are running out of space in their data center. Uh, they also may be having some contract ends, whether that be at the VMware side, uh, the data center side, the uh, licensing side. There's a there's a plethora of reasons there. The other one, as I talked to before, was the capacity needs. Again, Azure gives you the ability to scale up to additional nodes within 30 minutes versus by a lot lengthy hardware purchasing cycle. Uh, additionally, uh, when we talk about refreshes and refresh cycles, that's something you wouldn't have to worry about in the Azure VMware solution side of things because it is Microsoft managed. We manage the hardware to level. Additionally, um, when we talk about like implementing security uh, solutions, there is a plethora of options within Microsoft itself, and you'd be able to integrate those uh, seamlessly into the Azure VMware solution as well. Now, in terms of the use cases for Azure VMware solution, these are the three biggest reasons that customers consider looking at it, looking at it. So uh, first one is going to be obviously the data center exit. When we talk about the hardware refresh cycles, don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, when you talk about uh, procuring space, power, CPU redundancy, everything in be behind purchasing hardware is also managed by Microsoft. So this just gives you a seamless and low risk way to take your environment, move it into this exact same type of environment and uh, just keep on going. It's a VMware to VMware migration path. So this is the most common scenario uh, we see here. When we go into application modernization, the biggest one is going to be Microsoft end of support uh, for Windows Server 2012 and SQL Server 2012. Any workload you move into Azure, including Azure VMware Solution, gets these updates for free. If you keep it on-prem premises, you would uh, essentially be paying for both that extended support as long as you needed it. Uh, so this gives you a, a benefit that you, just for free that you wouldn't typically have to pay for anywhere else you get the abilities to bring your Windows Server license, and I'll cover that in a little bit too. Additionally, you would be able to get the Windows Server use benefits, and you'd be able to modernize into Azure platform or platforms or products as you need. Lastly is disaster recovery. Azure VMware solution makes a excellent DR site because you're able to use VMware tools such as Site Recovery Manager, Zerto or any other product and use have a cloud-based, easily scalable site for your DR platform. This is the process of how a customer would move from their own, from any environment into Azure VMware solution. Obviously, the biggest step is going to be the planning stage. This is something that Microsoft and VMware can work with you on, Nudesic as well, of course, to help plan and decide how, we, how many nodes you need, 
how would you do it and what components you need uh, to make it work. Networking is going to be a huge discussion there. So obviously we want to make sure we get that buttoned down very well. After that, it's just building it. Um, so that's where the provision stage goes. Typically that takes about six hours from start to finish when you click build and when it's ready to go. Then we start connecting all those services. This is where that networking discussion really comes in handy and also the planning side of things because you're able, that's when you'll be connecting your networking services into ABS directly. So once HCX is deployed, you'd be able to use a replicated assisted vMotion or RAV, which will allow you to multi replicate multiple VMs into the same environments. Additionally, you have the ability to do bulk migration. That would just be a more of a scheduled approach to your environments. And then from there, uh, you would just do a reboot of it and it would be living in Azure VMware solution natively. Once all the migration is done or you have what you need moved over to Azure VMware solution, that's when you start looking at your Azure services themselves. Like what do you want to do in attaching other services like Sentinel, Azure SQL database, and being able to go from there. These are the main benefits of why you should consider Azure VMware solution. The first one is I talked about a little earlier. You get the security updates for Windows Server 2012 and SQL Server 2012. Uh, that just hit, so just bringing it over, you get those benefits automatically. Next is the Azure Hybrid Use Benefit. Your licensing for Windows Server and SQL Server, along with software assurance, allows you to bring those licenses over as a one-to-one -one relationship. This is something that's only available in Azure. Anywhere else, you would have to pay for those licenses for Windows Server on those cloud platforms. Lastly, the reserved instances is where you would be able to get cost benefits. As if you commit to use um, Azure VMware Solution for one year or three years or even five years now, you would get a discount based on that usage. One year gives about 29%, three and five years give about 50%. One note about the five years is it is available until the end of March, but this just gives you a discount on your pricing. Lastly, when you move to Azure VMware Solution, you get the ability to think a little differently in how you would do a traditional on-premises deployment. Because it's with on-premise, you deploy servers, you put things on the servers, and that's it. With moving to Azure, you get the ability to use Azure services in addition to the VMware components. So taking your databases, for example, and moving them to a platform as a service or database as a service in these cases, lets you think a little differently because you can use those services in tandem with each other. So you don't have to manage difficult or complicated databases. That backend solution would be managed through Azure SQL database. Same with any of other solutions such as Azure Files, uh, or if you start going to containers, you can start having that integration on both sides of Azure and VMware. Lastly, this just ties more into it. This is how a typical networking design looks like at a very high level. This allows you to connect your data. This shows that you use your Express Router VPN to connect into Azure's infrastructure. AVS does something similar through its own uh, connections. It uh, uses Express Route to connect into Azure services as well. Because you see, the way you see it, you're able to have all those Azure services talk to AVS as you, depending on what you use and how you utilize it. And now I'll turn it over to Josh to talk about Nudesic and it, their status. Thanks, Justin. Here at Nudesic, our mission is to help clients get on the winning side of the digital transformation. Nudesic is uniquely positioned to help as we have a dedicated AVS practice. We have been a Microsoft partner for over 20 years. We are currently a top five GSI, and we are the 2023 Microsoft Global Migration Partner of the Year. Because of this status, we have access to programs and funding to help customers offset project costs. Now let's talk about our four week jumpstart. We like to start with an assessment of your current VMware environment that will determine node size, storage capacity, and overall environment size. And this will also let us know the cost to run AVS. From there, we turn into the architecture and foundations with connectivity, security, identity and access management, network segmentation, backup DR, et cetera. And then we'll get into the implementation phase of AVS, where we do the actual implementation and we'll deploy a virtual machine to AVS for POC purposes. And then after that, we'll talk about how you can optimize those workloads using Azure native services. Now let's look at the business value of AVS. Unlike some technologies where it's more difficult or takes a while to realize the benefits, that's not the case with AVS. 
you can immediately see some of the cost savings, specifically with the infrastructure and licensing. You can significantly cut down migration times. What would normally take months is now taking weeks because you're on Azure. With Azure services, you have the ability to scale as needed, save you time from having to spin up new server storage hardware resources. That's just a start. There's more to be had once you modernize and take advantage of the Azure services that are actually native to the cloud. And don't forget about the extended security updates, which allow you to extend those server 2012 updates once you migrate that machine over to AVS. Now I'm going to turn it over to Nada to close it out. Over to you, Nada. Thanks, Josh. So before we sign off for the day, I um, just want to let you know that I will be sending a follow up email and in that email will be included um, copies of today's webinar recording, as well as the slides that Justin, Justin and Josh presented today. Um, we'll also include some additional information on our Jumpstart offer. So if you have any questions or would like to schedule a one on one conversation around AVS or you know, want to learn even more about our four week Jumpstart, please reach out. My email address is on the screen and I will be more than happy to connect and help you out. So with that, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a good one.